Hello, my name is Eleanor Hewitt and I work as a tutor with the Dublin and Dunleary ETB Adult Education Service. Today I will be demonstrating embroidery. Hello, my name is Eleanor Hewitt. You can't see me, just my hands tonight. And I'm going to be teaching you some embroidery. I'd like to start with just a basic stem stitch and I'm going to be showing you different varieties of uh, the stem stitch. But before we start, I just want to um, let you know how to put a pattern on. First of all, we need some fabric. This is cotton fabric that I'm using. If you haven't been able to get out to the shops to buy some fabric, an old sheet or an old pillow slip that might be at the back of your, your hot press would do equally well. Now to get your pattern on the, um, the fabric, you can use uh, embroidery pencils. They're transfer pencils. The pink one is a dissolvable one. The blue one is water soluble one. Uh, you can use an ordinary pencil, um, a lead pencil, or you can use um, this pencil here, which I like. It's a rotary pencil and it has a green uh, refill in it. It's called Soline and I got it at the Knitting and Stitching Show, but it's available online. You just have to uh, Google Soline, S-E-W-L-I-N-E. -E. Now for the video purposes, I have put my um, pattern on with a fine marker, just to let you see the design that I'm doing. And I'm going to start off with the stem stitch, the ordinary stem stitch. And you start off at the top of your design. Now I drew my pattern with a pint glass and I just did a half circle with the pint glass. So you can use whatever you have to hand at home. And why have a straight line when you can have a curve? And what I'm doing here is taking a stitch along the line and back to the previous stitch holding my thread below the needle all the time and below the line. So my thumb goes on the thread every time I take a stitch and that makes sure that I have the thread in the correct position. So you're taking up a piece of fabric roughly that size and going back to the previous stitch. Thread below the line all the time. Now the stem stitch is a very versatile stitch. It can be used as a filling stitch, as a raised stitch, as a whip stitch, as a, an encroach stitch. So I'm going to show you these different varieties of stitch tonight. Now I forgot to put on my glasses, so excuse me for a moment. My line has gone a little bit crooked because I had no glasses on. So, oops. I wanted to show you how to build up a pattern with um, just very simple lines and very simple um, ideas. The reason for this is that we're stuck in the house we can't get to the shops and even if we could, the shops are closed. So we want to be able to work with what we have. Now, if you haven't got embroidery thread, I'm using three strands of embroidery thread tonight so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, a fine wool, and uh, this one here is double knitting wool, but if you can get four ply wool, it should be even better to do. Now, if you're using the double knit, you'd need a chenille needle, which is a bigger needle with a bigger eye and you should be able to thread it, no problem. Or you can use crochet cotton. Uh, this one is, is a number five crochet cotton. And the only thing with crochet cotton is that it tends to twist on you. So just be careful. If you find that your thread is twisting, at any stage, you just drop your needle 
and let it spin out and that shows how to avoid getting knots so when you see your thread twisting back up on itself it's time to drop the needle and let it untwist now that's your basic stem stitch working it's quite a narrow um a narrow stitch but i'm going to show you the encroached version now and this time you take a stitch along the line and you go back to where your thread is coming out so you're going beyond the previous stitch so it's into the fabric and back to where the thread is so it's quite a long stitch you're taking and you'll see the difference it'll be a thicker th uh, thicker um, stitch be darker so back to this in my way just um as i i was moving that thread out of the way just to remind you if you're not finishing a thread and you want to start on another thread always bring it to the front of your work and what we say is park it and the way to do it is to put a pin in your fabric or a needle and wrap your your thread around the two so that um it doesn't get caught up in the back of your work and if it was a dark thread like this is it would show up when you're framing so you make sure you keep your back as as neat as possible now for quickness oh sorry i'm going back to the ordinary one and um, this is the encroached one as well now you can do this stitch up this way as well which makes it a broader stitch but i don't want to go that thick uh, for this design and as i say this is just to show you how to build up a pattern with very little um, you I, at a later stage i'll probably get into the fact uh, to showing you how to put on your pattern using a light box i heard on uh, i think it might have been instagram or facebook a really easy way of making a, a light box using your iphone and a pyrex dish but you can also use a window patio door or whatever so i'm just finishing up along this line here and you can see the difference in the color of the thread it has got thicker on the second half of the stem of the curve i hope you can see all right and that my hand isn't in the way so we we'll finish off on this stitch here now to finish off you bring your needle to the end of the thread and pull it through and turn your work and you're literally just doing a little uh, slip stitch underneath your threads and then just go into the loop of the thread and make a slight knot and that stops your work from undoing and I'm just going to tidy up these little knots now you wouldn't if you were doing a tablecloth or anything like that you wouldn't use um, a knot you'd use an invisible start and I can show you that at a later stage but tonight we'll just uh, work with a knot and don't tell anybody so the next um, stitch I'm going to show you or if you can see there the ordinary stem stitch is along this line here and the heavier stem stitch is 
the encroached one. Now a lot of the books show the stem stitch as the encroached one, but um, the correct way of doing it is just back to the, the stitch. Now the next stitch I'm going to show you is the raised stitch. And what you have to do is have two parallel lines. And you're starting at the top and working down to the, the base of it. And you're just taking a straight stitch across the two lines. And coming up on the side you went down, you take a stitch and go across opposite. So I've gone down on the bottom line, so I'm going to come up on the same side. And what you're doing there is like a ladder for your stem stitch. And what it looks like on the reverse is just two rows of running stitch, like so. My last one was a little bit crooked. A man in a galloping horse won't notice it. Now, because I'm working on a curve, I'm going to end up with one short, shorter stitch, I think, down to the curve. No, we'll get away with that. So you're doing a row of, like a ladder, a row of straight stitches across. Um, now I'm going to turn my work. Now I don't think I said it to you in the beginning that a stem stitch has always worked from from left to right. So you can turn your work to suit um, the fact that you're going to start from left to right. So I'm coming up just on the inside of the stem stitch. And I've used a different shade of brown. For this and with the eye of the needle you're going to go under the straight stitch and hold the thread down below the line now this time when you're doing it make sure you pull on the thread so that your stitch comes to the edge of the line and I'm using the eye of the needle so that I don't pick up any of the fabric. I'm literally going underneath the stem, the straight stitch, sorry, and doing my stem stitch over the straight stitch. Now, depending on what you're doing, um, you can use all the one color or you can use variety of shades if you want to get um, sh shading in the in the uh, stitch so what I'm going to do is up and down on each side but you can do it all in one direction but you have to stop and start. So you can come back to here and start and do a, a second row along. But what I'm going to do tonight, just to show you what can be done, is turn my work and come up just a fraction beyond the first rung of the ladder. With the eye of the needle again, go underneath the rung or the post, as you might know if you're a crocheter, and do your stem stitch. Now, tonight I'm using a chenille needle. I would normally use a number seven embroidery needle if I were using three strands, but I go down as far as one strand and I would use a size 10 needle for one strand. <coughs> Excuse me. And tonight I use the chenille needle it's a big eye so that if the thread happens to come out of the needle, I'd be able to re-thread it easy enough without um, too much bother. 
but I have a, a few needles threaded before I came in. But just in case this slips out of the needle. I'd be mortified if I couldn't thread the needle. <laughs> Live on air. Now, this is a very basic um, pattern. And I want to show you how you can build it up. So this is going to be the bark of, or the trunk of a tree. And I'll show you what I mean now in a moment. So go into the first one again and make sure you pull your thread down tight so that your next row of stitches goes in tight to the first row. Now, as I say, you could put a lighter shade. You'll probably get about five rows of stitches in this area here. So you'd be going up and down, up and down. And on the last up, you could use a lighter shade of um, brown, maybe a beige, or you could use a pale green. And it will give you the effect that the sun is shining on it. So this is basically what you do for a raised stem. It's lovely in uh, Calico Gardens. You can use um, a number five pearl cotton or a number eight pearl cotton or a crochet cotton in a neat crew kind of cream color. Now, I'll just show you one more stitch. I would probably only get away with the four, but you're starting on the first post with your first stitch. And then push your stitches away to give you room and to pack them tightly. And that's how it's how it's done. So that's part one of what we're doing today. And this is it here. Now I've drawn in some branches. Now don't be too particular about how you draw them in. You're literally doing a line and a little line off it, a line and a little line off it. And don't overcrowd it because you have to leave room for the butterflies and the bees. So this time I'm going to show you the um, wrong color. I'm going to show you the uh, oh it's gone out of my head the whipped stem stitch. So you're starting at the top of your um, the top of the the trunk and you're doing a stem stitch along one of the lines. Now, as I say, I did it with a fine marker just to show it up. Oh, there's a bit of light on the subject. Is that helping you? My technical person is Dara, my son, who's keeping an eye on me while I do this. So I'm just doing a stem stitch up to the top of the branch. So hold your thread down. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, I tend to put my finger behind the work where I'm working. And although the, the fabric is quite tight in the, in the uh, frame, in the hoop, there is a little bit of leeway when you push your finger in behind and it helps to bring your needle up where you want it to go. Now just be careful that you don't stab yourself. And if you're used to wearing a thimble, maybe use it on your middle finger behind the work. 
So when we get to the top, I'm going to show you how to whip it. Now, I'm not using a, a contrasting color for this because it's easier to do it with the same, the same thread. Now, at the end of your stitch, bring your needle down and pull through. Turn your work and you're going to come up to the left of your last stitch. And with the eye of the needle, again, we're going to whip the stem. Sorry, I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> now here I have to thread a needle, so this is proof of the pudding. That one is already whipped. Now the chenille needle came in handy. This is the one I should have come up on. So you come up to the left of the stitch and put your needle underneath the double part of the stitch. And you can see what it does is it brings it all together and it makes it a much finer stitch. Now at this stage I can finish that whip there and just do this little petal or little branch. So stem stitch again just up to the top of this and my hand shook when I was drawing this one here. So hopefully you won't see the, the wobble. That's just three stitches for that little bit. Turn your work, come up to the left of the stem stitch and with the eye of the needle, go under the double part of the stitch. Your threads cross over slightly at one end of the stitch. I've just stabbed myself. Now finish down that stitch and come up to the left where we left off. And with the eye I tend not to use a thimble and um, my finger is red raw from all the stitching I've been doing lately. I'm doing a lovely piece of stump work at the moment. It's a Susan O'Connor uh, pattern. She's from Australia, Adelaide in Australia. And it's loves me, loves me not, loves me, loves me not loves me. So all the petals have to be done on wire at the moment. So I have all the stems of the flowers and the French knots all worked and the stems are worked in the raised um, stem stitch using one strand of thread. And for each stem there's seven rows of um, seven rows of, of uh, stem stitch. Now you can see the difference um, between this stitch here. It's, it's quite rounded and it looks more like a, a branch. So that's our twisted, our, our whipped uh, stem stitch. And the next one I want to show you is the stem stitch filling. So I'll just leave that parked up here and just wrap the thread around the needle and it just 
keeps it out of the way. And I've used these um, leaf shapes as they're meant to be little conifer trees. So I've started a, a second one in a deeper shade. And I just want to show you how to turn the stitch and get a nice point. So we're doing our stem stitch as normal. Back to the previous stitch. Take up a piece of fabric along the line, back to the stitch. And your thread is positioned up the stitch and that's what gives it the rope effect. So we're at our last stitch here before we turn. So you come to the top of the stitch Bring the needle down. Stay over there out of the way. Turn your work and just come up a thread away. Now, if you pierce the previous stitch, there's no problem. But if you come back in the same hole, you end up undoing your last stitch. So we continue doing the stem stitch. It's at this stage you like to have six times your speed so that it doesn't bore you. If you don't have an embroidery hoop, what you could use is an old picture frame. The glass taken out and you can use thumbtacks to pin your fabric to the, the frame and that's something that you might have in the house and it will work as long as you pull your fabric nice and taut <clears throat> it, uh, it works as a hoop When we get to the end, oops, I'm going to show you how to fill in. Now, I was just doing a sampler with all the different stem stitches you can do. Um, if you hold your thread above the needle when you're doing your stitch, it becomes the outline stitch. And if you alternate your thread, one down, one up, one down, one up, it becomes the cable stitch. So it's a very versatile stitch. And rather than have it done in straight lines and make it boring, I decided I'd make it into a little picture. And just how easy it is to build up a picture using one, maybe two stitches. Now I'm going very close to the first row of stitches. And I'm going to keep going around in circles ever decreasing circles until the whole leaf or tree is filled in. So it'll look like a little conifer tree. Now you can use, um, these are just threads that I had. I was gifted uh, a lot of anchor threads and as they're no longer available, I'm using them up on samplers and I'm turning my work again and I'm coming up just a thread away from the last stitch. Now keep your stitches close to the previous row so that you don't end up with gaps of white showing through. 
Now, if that happens, you can always go back and fill in with one or two straight uh, stem stitches. So that's basically your five different stitches all from the one stitch. So we started off with the plain stem stitch. And I didn't do the encroached on this one, or did I? No, it's on another one. Um, you had the stem stitch, the encroached one, the raised stem stitch, the whipped stem stitch, and now the stem stitch filling. And they can all be used to make a picture. And I'll show you one I had, I've done earlier. And um, this would be the winter scene where the branches are bare. I have a few French knots at the bottom. And this time I did three, um, little conifer trees in dark green and this one I did this afternoon I was looking out at the blossoms in the park opposite my house and I decided I'd put some blossoms on the branch uh, they're just French knots I have some French knots here uh, my little hyacinths are French knots they're closed enclosed um, stem stitch filling is used for the uh, conifer trees. And just to show you a piece that you could do up and on green on with me, if you were up for a week, um, you'd probably get this one finished. And it's a, a design from um, Inspirations magazine. I can't remember who the author of the design is, um, but it's just one that I love. I have done it several times. And the stem stitch filling is used here on the cart. The whipped stem is here on the handle and stem stitch just laying side by side. The wheel is outlined in stem stitch using the black and the supports for the roof are in stem stitch. And this here, um, the canopy is done in stem stitch and I worked it up, stopped and down and stopped and it gave a kind of a center line. And we can show some of the other stitches at a later date. And that's all I have to show you tonight. I hope you were um, now impressed isn't the word <laughs> I'm looking for. I hope you were inspired to do a little design just from a circle, two straight lines and a few leafy uh, stitches. Till the next time, thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you for watching and please remember to stay safe by washing your hands, social distancing and observing the government COVID-19 guidelines. Thank you. Bye bye.